With the sound of shattering chains ringing in your ears, you celebrate your victory but for a moment. And then you're once more alone in a wagon. It feels good to win again. Though, of course, the loop continues. It never stops. You reluctantly brace yourself and sign the contract that leads you towards the resentment of the seething sigh. Pressing against the chains of denial feels less complete than facing the sigh. After all, the denial, denial has been fully conquered. Resentment still, still challenges, still causes still causes difficulty and no doubt in future there will be a new opportunity perhaps bargaining if your guess is right but till then time to meet your companions hey what's going on everyone it's loki orn and we are back in darkest dungeon 2 and i've got a got a new formation for you all today um just trying to uh trying to keep mixing it up and unfortunately the uh looking at like the options for like cause and effect we don't really have we have we do have an orphan runaway which is pretty good but uh without a good path for the jester or the occultist i'm kind of reluctant to try uh, cause and effect however um this is an interesting opportunity to take advantage of the other side of the um the orphan runaway the increased damage out front and with a sergeant man at arms we can put in uh whoops did I do that backwards? I did. Okay. We can take out a new formation, the Defectors. Uh, so at the back rank, we have Alhazred, who is a Wanderer. He has Hatred of Swine, if we get the Seleuce, and Braggart, which is not our favorite. But given that he's going to be pretty much in the back rank, though uh, we'll see in a moment that he is going to get to move a little bit. Kind of wonder if maybe we just go like this. This seems pretty good. Yeah, we'll go like this for now. Uh, next up is Barristan, who's a sergeant. So he's reduced damage output, uh, but his bolster skill does more. He And he's also buffing allies, and he has a 100% move resist. So he is going to be pretty good in the Shroud. He has Hatred of Pillagers and Hypochondria, which is not great. Uh, but we'll go ahead and set him up with kind of our usual... Uh, usual option here but we will bring in command since it does a bit more next up you as we saw was audrey who is a master grave robber um and her her position gets quite interesting because um she's in rank two but we can actually have her move backwards so the lunge the lunge pirouette combo is on the table as is poison dart and pick to the face so we've got a lot of variety here uh, she has evasive which is very strong and vicious which is not exactly bad so uh audrey's gonna be our primary hitter here and finally we have an orphan runaway so she has reduced hp but the closer she is to the front the more damage she does the further she is in the back the more burn she deals since we're going after the seething sigh here we need her doing damage because we need her to deflate lungs and we're just gonna have to hope along the way that we get um we find a way to deal dot damage she is devout, but has a fear of pillagers, which, to be fair, is pretty reasonable for her. Anyway, Firefly is out, Cauterize is in, Run and Hide can go away, as can, um, do we want Hearthlight? I don't think we want Hearthlight, I think we'd rather have Ransack, and I think that'll set us up. So, yeah, this is the Defectors. Uh, let's As we get dived in, um, do want to uh, take, every, take a moment to remind everyone, hey... Thank you all for watching. I've noticed new subscribers coming in, new faces, uh, new comments from new folks. I hope I replied to everybody. But uh, thank you all for um, thank you all for watching. And hey, if you like the videos, drop a like, drop a subscribe. You know the drill. Let the YouTube algorithm know I make content that you and people like you like to watch. Anyway, let's talk about the defectors in the macro sense, and um, we have to kind of balance this. Oh wow, two of my times in the desert. That's interesting. And we have to kind of balance this by the fact that our hero paths do inform... The Sagir, too, is quite good this early. I do kind of inform how we play, but thinking about the, the formation in the most generic sense, this formation is kind of interesting. From a stress healing standpoint, all we really have is Barristan with Bolster. 
And given what we've learned about how difficult the stress gain is um, in the game right now, bolster is really not enough to do more than kind of slow the bleeding. So we're definitely going to want to play cautious early, particularly um, around cultist fights, just to avoid getting run over by stress. Uh, so there's mediocre stress healing. It's theoretically enough, but just hasn't felt that way. From a healing perspective, though, this formation really is in quite good shape. al Hazred with Weird Reconstruction is our healer, um, especially once we find ways to get him unchecked power stacks. Barrison can heal himself with Strategic Withdrawal. Uh, Audrey can heal herself with both Absinthe and Dead of Night. And Bonnie can heal with Cauterize. So we definitely have plenty of healing in the formation. And with the exception of Cauterize not being usable from rank 1, which we, we, we will have opportunities to get Bonnie into rank 2 if needed, um, definitely looking like we have plenty of healing. Then finally, damage output. And this is where our specific formation is kind of influencing our um, decision making a bit. Because normally our, our damage output wouldn't really be there. Um, however, an orphan in the front rank is... Uh, is doing more, you know, is doing a bit more than um, normal. And a um, Master Grave Robber is definitely going to be doing damage. And then we do have Burning Bright. Uh, we have Dots coming in primarily from the Grave Robber. Um, we're probably not going to be using Amnesis. And the Orphan is not very good at um, dealing Burn uh, from this position. If we moved her all the way to the back, she'd be quite good at it. Um, as we as we saw in the cause and effect uh, run. So we're really reliant on straight up damage output with a little tiny bit of dot damage here or there. So it remains to be seen how well this will do against the Psy. We need to be we need to be able to deal 20 damage in a hit. Um, we'll definitely be able to do that every other turn, give or take, but we'll have to see if we can do it more consistently than that. But anyway, as we set up at uh, the Torch and Crown here, Get our stress heals. Uh, we do have two my times in the desert, which is quite nice. And two holy waters and smoke bombs is pretty good too. Let's see where we're going first of all. Oh well, that's easy. Straight into the sluice. Yeah, get that early sluice out of the way. Get some get some added um, payout here. Holy beads, whittling tools, speed bag. We'll buy holy beads and um, speed bag. We're not going to use them though. And here's why. Um, you know, we don't need to. Like, the sluice is not going to be... I don't think the sluice is going to be what uh, tears us up here. As we upgrade bolster just to make sure we have the stress healing. Um, the sluice isn't going to be what tears us up, but it is going to be an opportunity to ramp. Um, minor anchoring charm. You're already functionally immu immune to move, uh, but we will put this on you. And uh, we're probably just going to get rid of minor protectorate. Um, combat items. Um, let's get that on you. Let's get that on you. Call that good. And yeah, so that's the formation. Mediocre stress heal. Very strong healing. And the damage is a bit of a question mark. I'm not sure if it's going to be there or not. But we're going to find out together. So, uh, oh, almost forgot to do food. Um, I don't even think we need to do apples and cheese. I think we'll save those for the next, uh, next spot. Yeah, I think we're just going to save all this stuff. So, yeah. Tune in next time as we head into the sluice. Uh, until then, see ya.